Welcome to another edition of War Masters Workshop. Today we're uh, going to be learning how to put together a um, an external sound pickup circuit. Um, this works in a in a Mandalorian helmet, or really any helmet, uh, preferably a Mandalorian helmet. Uh, it's a pretty simple circuit. Um, it can be powered uh, fairly easily from a couple um, a couple batteries. Uh, and um, it it's only takes uh, a little bit of um, patience and a few components here. And I'll go over these components real quick so you know exactly what they are. Um, the first component, well, the first two components are these little, um, what's called a MEMS microphone. Um, these are solid state microphones. And uh, they don't have, um, they're not like the standard electret uh, conducting microphone that uh, that you normally see um, used in uh, sound and audio uh, app applications. These are uh, special uh, mics and I'll, I'll unpackage these here shortly and show them to you um, directly. But uh, the next piece is uh, is the uh, amplifier which we'll use to uh, drive the, the, the sound uh, to the speakers. And it's just a small 3.7 watt uh, Class D amplifier. This runs off of, I believe, um, 3 to 5 volts. Um, these also run off 3 to 5 volts. And then the last and probably the most special uh, piece of, of this circuit is the uh, what's called the bone uh, conductor transducers. And that's what we'll use to uh, pipe the sound directly into our head. It doesn't have to go into our ears. So let me go ahead and I'm going to set these aside and we're just going to go over each component one at a time. So first we're going to go over the, uh, the MEMS microphone. These are also called uh, silicon microphones, but they're pretty small. These all come from uh, adafruit.com. That's where I buy most of my electronics at. They, uh, they have a wide, wide variety there. So, um, so this little microphone. I'm going to hold it up here. Actually, let me put it on this. It's, it's really tiny. Alright, so here is our MEMS microphone. Now that little piece in the center that has the little kind of dot in it there, so actually a little hole, that is the actual microphone. That is tiny. Um, these things don't generate a whole lot of feedback. So that's why they kind of work best um, in this in this setting. But there's five terminals on it. We're only going to be using three of those terminals. The we're going to use the the VN or the voltage in, which is the very top terminal that you can see there. We're going to be using the ground, which is the middle terminal. It says GND on it, and then we're going to use the very last terminal, which says DC. Um, if you're using this just to produce a waveform uh, on a microcontroller, you'd use DC. And if you were using uh, alternating um, waveform, then you would use AC. But for our purposes, we're just going to be using the VN, the ground, and the DC terminals on this. And of course, they do come with the little um, headers here that you can solder in there. Now, the next piece, and you're going to need two of these. You're going to need two of these. Um, well, you don't have to have two. I use two. That way I can get, I can pick up the sounds on both the left and the right. Now, they don't quite pick up as much sound as an Electret micro, uh, microphone, but we're not looking for, like, super crisp. We just want something that will help us hear what's going on outside of our helmet a little bit better. Now our next piece here is this 3.7 watt amplifier, and that's really all we need. And it it's fairly small. We'll hold it up next to the MEMS board here, and you can see it's it's also a really, really small amplifier. It doesn't require a lot of power. And um, let me hold this up so I can show you exactly what's what's in it. All right, so there's our our little amplifier. 
and we're going to be using a good portion of these um, chips here. We're going to or the 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 uh, terminals here. We're going to be using the uh, the VDD, which is the voltage in. We're going to be using the ground. We're going to be using the uh, plus left, minus left. These are inputs. Uh, minus right, plus right. These are all inputs. And of course, this is uh, this is where our um, pins go for gain. If you want to adjust the gain, uh, we won't. We're probably not even going to mess with that. We're going to leave it. Uh, well, well, we'll test it out and see. We may use some of these. We're going to go ahead and put the header in there, and we'll use what's appropriate. But we may not use any of them. And then these headers here are for our um, our screw down terminals for the uh, for the bone conductors. Okay. And then, of course, the last piece, which is, like I said, the, what I feel is the most special. And this is the same circuit that I use in my own helmet, so I know it works well. These are the bone conducting transducers, okay? Now, what these do, and I'll explain the principle behind this, what this does is this turns the, um, the electric signal, instead of vibrating a cone, which moves air, these vibrate this little metal plate on top and that metal plate will sit against your your head preferably uh, close to your ear um, I would I would either put mine mine actually fit like right above and slightly behind um, my ear canal so you want to try to get these as close to the area where your ear bones are and your ear bones lie kind of inset from your ear so if you can place it slightly in front of your ear or slightly above your ear or even maybe slightly behind your ear that will work well but um, but if you can get it you know pretty close to that area very close to your ear, the closer to your ear the ears they are the better um, the better the sound is going to be um, in your head and the, the, the neat the neatest thing about these is when you take your helmet off you don't hear sound coming out of your helmet. You don't start hearing the sound until you put your helmet back on and these touch the side of your head again. They they basically reproduce the sounds outside of your helmet inside your head. So that's a really cool, really neat thing. Um, and uh, that's, that is why I always feel like it's the most uh, special, special part. Now to build this circuit, the cost is not super high. You're going to pay around um, $5 a piece for these little MEMS microphones. You're going to pay around eight, eight to nine dollars a piece for the little, um, sorry, for the little bone conductors. And um, for the amp, I believe that's also around nine dollars or so. Um, I can look that up real quick and see exactly how much that is. But I'm pretty sure it's only, um, yeah, it's it's actually nine dollars. So yeah, so you've got uh, nine, nine, well, you're going to need two of these. So you're looking at about $18 for these. You're looking at $10 for two of these. And then you're looking at another $9 for this. So, you know, that's that's not a lot of money. That's that's basically, what, 28 30, That's a little less than $40. So that's not bad considering um, what you're going to be getting out of this. Now... What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and solder. Um, I'm only going to do one side of this circuit. I'm not going to do the both sides because really, if you see one side done, you'll know fairly easily or you know fairly well how to do the the second side, and that side's pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and solder together the uh, MEMS microphone, and we're going to solder together the amplifier real quick, just so you can see um, how that's done and uh, what we need to use. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks on the microphone, as, or on the amplifier, as far as uh, how to get these standoffs to go um, to the side so that you can plug everything in kind of on the side instead of uh, straight down. That way it just saves a little space in your helmet. You want those, you know, you want the standoffs to kind of angle off to the side at a at a 90 degree angle you don't really want them sticking straight up because you want you don't you know if they're sticking straight up you may you know you may um, lose some space in your helmet whereas if they're sticking off to the side they're moving you know out to the side 
this way instead of moving up this way, um, you've got less space that you have to worry about um, uh, trying to to uh, recover somewhere in your helmet. So, so let's go ahead and get this soldered up. And of course, to do that, we'll start with the microphone here. We've got our trusty helping hands. Now we only need um, five of these headers. We don't need all six, so I'm just going to take my clippers here. Clip one of these off. Five. And of course, we always keep our spare headers. Never throw those things away because they make great terminals for, for wires, for using test wires. So I'm going to use my helping hands here, and I'm going to clip this in on one side and make sure when you clip it, you're clipping the, the plastic part of the header. Let's see if I can angle this down. Yep. Now you want to make sure that when you clip it, you clip it so that, there you go, you're also catching the header as well, so that you hold the header in there nice and tight. So let's go ahead. Ooh, I think I lost my... Here we are. Let's go ahead and solder this in. And I've got to move this. I'm going to move this up so that I can see it, so that you can see me solder as well. All right, so. Doesn't require a whole lot of solder here. And what I do is I solder it on both sides. That way I can pull the helping hands off the header. And then I just solder the rest of the pins. Very easily done. Make sure you get these terminals completely covered with the solder. You don't want it to be messy, but you don't want it to be, uh, you know, you don't want those solder joints to be too loose. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'll hold it up here so that you guys can see it. I know you can't see it the greatest, but the solder joints are fairly nice and even. No blobs of solder or anything like that. No pieces of solder that are kind of slagged off the terminals here. You want to make sure you don't short those out. So, All right, so now we're just going to set that to the side for now. Now let's go ahead and this will be the fun one because this one's going to require quite a bit of soldering. So, so when we look at our terminals here, we've got we'll count them out so that we make sure we clip the headers correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I always count twice just to make sure I didn't miss one. So we've got nine. So we need to cut nine headers. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me count one more time. Moving them, I kind of lost my count here in my place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you lose your, your spot where you're counting, oh, I need a different pair. Um, if you lose the spot that you counted, just count them again. It's, it's pretty easy. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.
There we go. Pretty easy. And then just to make sure. There we go. Nine pins in our header perfectly. All right. So let's go ahead and solder these up just like we've done before. We put our helping hands. And what I try to do on, on larger circuits like this, larger boards, is I put it more towards the center. All right. And then just like we did on the moving my helping hands back there a little, just like we did on the MEMS microphone, we're just going to solder the first and last pin while it's in the helping hands. And then I'm going to, I try to hold it on these, these holes here for standoffs. So I try to hold it on those so that I don't potentially damage the board in any area where it might affect the, uh, the circuit and its ability to function. And again, make sure your solder completely covers the terminal and the header stem there. One thing you want to be wary of is if you, you don't want to keep the soldering iron touching that stem too long, because if you do, you're going to melt the plastic on that header and the stem may drop out. I've seen that happen before. I've had it happen to me before. So you want to try to be fairly quick. Let me straighten my solder here a little bit. There we go. All right, so we've got that one. Now the next thing we're going to solder on is we're going to go ahead and solder on the um, the gain header. And we don't have to do any clipping there. They send that with the perfect amount of headers. So, And again, we want to clip it in the center. What I'm going to do here is one on the bottom and then one on the other side on these top pins here. A little bit of flash there. We can get that off pretty simply. There we go. Now let's move our helping hands to here, our alligator clip. You always want to make sure to keep your solder as straight as possible when you do this. That way you don't have to worry about fumbling around with it, kind of like I was doing a couple minutes ago. Again, you want to take your time when doing this. It's definitely not a race. been soldering for many years so it's a pretty pretty simple thing for me anymore all right and just make sure yep looks like we've got four and four all soldered up all right now these headers are going to be a little bit difficult too because they're they're kind of bigger than what you would um, these these uh, screw down headers they're a little bit bigger than the other uh, push pin headers. Okay, so what we're going to do is you want to make sure that the screw side, which is this side, 
That's, well, that's the side, the, in, the output side. That's the side where your wires will go for your uh, bone transducers. You want to make sure those are facing out, okay? So we just put those through with the posts, and hopefully my helping hands will open up. I think they'll open up just wide enough to get that on there. Now, one thing we've got to be careful of, and let's move this over a little bit. There we go. Now, you just want to be careful that you don't um, get your alligator clip on your helping hands or whatever you're using. You don't want to get it in between these because that'll that'll uh, pull the heat away from the actual area we're trying to solder, and that could, that could potentially be a problem. Now these are some pretty big posts, so they require a little bit more solder than these smaller header posts. But just like with any other post, make sure you get a good amount on there. Now let's move over to the next header, and again you want to make sure that those the little metal bits there, the, the terminal side, is facing out. And now we get, I'm going to do this outside piece first because our alligator clip's really close to the other. A little bit more. Okay. And now let's go ahead and move our alligator clip out to the little standoff hole there. The really cool thing about uh, these parts from Adafruit is that they come with some information on the back of them. And you can see all that little writing back there, all that little uh, the text. And what that is telling you is how much voltage. It tells you your here is your VDD, which is your maximum input voltage. It tells you your gain. It also tells you your oh, that, that that's your gain, and then the jumpers, which are the this terminal here, for the gain, and it also tells you your max output power at five volts is 3.7 watts. It's a uh, yeah 3.7 watts at 30 ohms, three watts at 40 ohms, and 1.7 watt at 80 ohms. So if you have a uh, if you've got a battery pack which I do have a battery pack. I don't know if I have a small enough battery pack. I think I have one right here. All right, so we have this small battery pack here, but I think it only holds hold three, yes. So you've, I've got a, here's a small AAA battery pack, which is what we're going to use to power this. So here's our little AAA. So AAA, you know, these little AAA batteries are uh, 1.5 watts. So if we put three of them in there, it gives us 4.5 watts, which is almost maximum the maximum amount of uh, amperage. Now, because these MEMS microphones are not really amplified, they're very very little amplification going on in that circuit um, it's nice to try to keep the uh, the max power going into your amplifier your max voltage as high as possible all right so for now we're done with the soldering let's go ahead and take this off and this this little header right here this is just a jumper that goes on this gain area and for now, I'm just going to put it on 18 because I have nowhere else to put it. So we're going to set it there for now. And let me put that there. 
Let's move this out of the way. All right, so we've got our three primary pieces of this circuit. So let's go ahead and bring our breadboard over here so that we can see what we need to do to wire it up. Now, I've already got some voltage going in here. And this is just a, a regular lithium-ion battery, one of my kind of industrial batteries here that I use for powering up this kind of stuff. And it's throwing out about 3.7-ish volts. So well, that's plenty of volts to power this little MEMS microphone. So let me just set everything here that we need. All right, so we're going to keep this fairly simple on the breadboard, and we're just going to use some jumper wires to connect these together for now. What we're going to do is we're going to put our positive on the um, voltage in line. We're going to put our ground on the middle line, in the middle uh, terminal here, and then we're going to put our um, our our audio out on this end piece here. And again, all these can be seen on the back of this, okay? And on the front right here. If you look down here on the bottom, you'll see all these little, um, all descriptions for all each of these little terminals. So let's go ahead and I always like plugging in my audio out first before we even put our power on there. So audio out is going to go ahead and go to right here, right positive. And then what we're going to have to do here is use a jumper line. To go from ground Grab another line up here. Because our ground is going to end up being um, kind of all in one, all in one area here. Let me just turn this. It's probably easier if we do that. So we need one for ground. Go ahead and plug that on in. And then we need another line for ground which let me use, try to keep the colors all fairly similar here because this ground line will have to go to the board and then this line, I'm sorry, the amplifier, and then this line here will go into the This line will go into the ground on the microphone. And then, last but not least, we plug in our power line. And since we don't have to worry about plugging anything else up to this battery, I'm just going to unplug it from the header and run it straight into the VN line. All right, so we've got our 3.7 uh, volts coming in. We've got our ground, and we've got our audio out. And the audio out, of course, is running over here. Now we need one more line here for ground. Now we're gonna at this point we're going to go to our ground on the amplifier. 
for right, so you want to put this in right minus. The ground for the microphone has got to go into not only the microphone, but it also has to go into the amp. So you've got to remember that, that the microphone's ground has to go into the amp, the minus for that channel on the amp as well. So if you're using the right channel on the microphone, you're going to have to put that ground into right negative or right minus. And then now all we have to do is hook in our battery, which we will do here. And we're just going to wrap our positive line around that. Here's our positive connection. And then we need our negative connection. For that, I'm going to need one more terminal here. And we'll just use the gray line for that. So here's our ground here. Now, if you were doing both sides, of course you're going to use, right now we're just using right. But if you were using both right and left, which you probably will, you're going to use both right and left terminals, all right, for your input. So here's our ground that we're putting in, just like that. And now we will wrap our ground wire from our battery, our battery pack, I should say, for the amp we're using the battery pack. We'll wrap our ground line around that. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to hold it. All right, so at this point, we've got our microphone wired up. We've got our amplifier wired up. Now we just need to put our bone conductor on there. Now, the bone conductor, to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to screw down. And of course, you have to look on this to see what's what. So we've got right out is labeled, so right negative. So we're just going to use the right channel since that's what, we're, that's what our input is on. So let me grab a small precision screwdriver here, and we're going to put the right in where it says right negative. And just screw that terminal down. And make sure that you've got the actual metal part of the wire in there. It's even screwed all the way down. It's a very thin wire, so you may have to try a couple times. All right, that's good. Now our positive for right channel. I don't know if there's really any good way to do this without my hand being in the way. There we go. Now, all right, so We've got our, let me pull this out, we've got our bone conducting transducer right here, wired into the terminals here, okay, positive and negative. Now, 
We haven't turned on our amplifier yet, but we do have power running to the microphone. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use a plastic cup. actually fairly clear once you hear it in your head and the amplifier picks it up and creates a fairly good reproduction all right so i just wanted to show everybody my uh, my own helmet insert just so you can see where the uh, the mems mic placement is for my external pickups and hopefully that will give you some ideas on how you can um, incorporate the external pickups into your own helmet but uh, these, these are the actual um, mic pickups, and where they sit in relation to the uh, to my electronics insert that goes inside my helmet. And the way I have made these is I've put them on posts that plug into these little plugs right here, so that if there's a, if I have a problem with these microphones, I can actually just unplug them directly from. The entire system and replace them work on them whatever this basically a an a socket that I have crafted on a wire here that I've fabricated so that I can you know I can put this system pretty much in any bucket I can resize it just by pulling the lines around um, so I could put this, this, you know, I could put this insert in just about any bucket that I could fit my head in with the insert in it. Now I'm gonna move the camera up just slightly here. As for the placement of the transducers, there is where you can see that I have them, and I have them inset in these foam pieces because if I did not have that, they would vibrate against the helmet and you'd hear the sound coming out of the helmet. Um, so with them being in these foam pieces, the foam actually uh, insulates them from vibrating the helmet itself. So these touch, um, touch my head right here. When my head is in there, it touches my head right behind my ears, fairly close. Um, it's fairly close, close enough so that I can hear these very well. And then when I turn this around, I'll show you the placement of the amplifier itself. All right, so here is my actual amplifier. And that's the same 3.7 watt amplifier that I've got in this tutorial. Uh, it's, it's next to my wireless voice transmitter, but that is that is the actual amplifier. It runs off of a um, a battery in this compartment, in this power compartment over here, and um, the battery does have a small circuit protecting and a small circuit protection uh, going on with it. And if I need to pull it out and uh, recharge it, it's pretty easy. I just take off the panel in the front, or I can remove the whole um, insert and pull all the batteries out and charge them at once. I know looking at the back of this thing kind of looks like Darth Vader's uh, helmet a little bit with all the wires, but um, but anyway, so that's how I've got it in, in my helmet. That's how it works in my own helmet. In 2018, uh, September 15th and 16th, I'll be in Reykjavik, Iceland attending Midgard. And uh, those of you who, uh, who are at the show can come by and I'll uh, make sure to take some time to show you how my um, how my external sound audio pickups are, are installed. We'll be doing a workshop at that show, and I'll be showing people how to make armor. And uh, one of the things I really enjoy is, is showing people how I've also done it, so that that will inspire them to um, make a you know come up with some better ideas. One more thing I wanted to show real quick is where these pieces actually, or where these microphones actually attach or fit into my helmet. Now, that's probably the best angle we're going to get. This is 
where my pickups go in the helmet. And uh, of course, the helmet was designed with these, with these, uh, this little um, um, grating area here for sound specifically. So I fit the pickup so that the microphone sits between, sits in this little open area here, between this, these, you know, these rails. So it fits in this open area here, and that way it can collect the sound as it comes in from the front. I've got this on both sides of the helmet, so all I have to do is just set the, uh, I just put the, the MEMS mic in here, and I just cover it with a, a little piece of tape, you know, a little piece of, of um, Gorilla Tape. It doesn't take a lot uh, to hold that MEMS mic in there, and I need it to be removable as well in case something happens. So I don't want to uh, put it in there in any permanent, um, with any permanency. It's, it has to be removable so that I can fix it in the event that there's a problem. And I can guarantee you that there will always be at least one problem when you troop at some point. So you want to keep these things as accessible as possible. All right. Well, that's all we have for this uh, episode of War Masters Workshop. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you've learned something. And uh, if you uh, enjoy these, you can support the workshop on uh, Patreon. Just uh, go to Patreon and look up War Masters Workshop. Um, also, uh, feel free to uh, to uh, come like our the Facebook fan page for Mandalore the Uniter. I post up all of my uh, um, all of what I'm working on, lots of pictures, um, all, all kinds of uh, fun Mandalorian and Star Wars stuff there. Um, so uh, feel free to come by and like the page, and uh, we'll see you at the, uh, in the next episode of War Masters Workshop.